Hey everyone, it's Kyle, and welcome to the next Let's Play. Welcome to the original Sonic the Hedgehog, released back in 1991. Dear God, this game's almost 22 years old. Yeah, yeah. This was, if I remember correctly, this was Sega's approach to try and combat Mario because the Sega Genesis was Sega's second console, I believe. The Master System system being the first one. And, uh, needless to say, this game alone started the rivalry that's lasted all 22 of these years. <laughs> Although they have teamed up once or twice in the Olympic Games for some reason. Basic controls are the exact same as Sonic 2, which I did, uh, last year, I believe, now. Which I really have to get to redoing, actually. But, uh, anyway, now we're... Backstory outside and controls, really. Welcome to Green Hill Zone, the only... one of only two really speedy zones in the game. Now, actually, since we're coming up on the end of the first act already, 44 seconds, I think that's actually a record for me. <laughs> uh, 50 rings will make that giant ring at the in appear at the end of the act, uh, and this leads to the special stages of this game. You don't get them checkpoints like you do in 2. Then again, I didn't even show that off in Sonic 2, did I? <laughs> I really need to get redo Sonic 2 at some point. And a couple other things, too, actually. <laughs> anyway... For those of you guys who have played Sonic 4, this looks familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> they got the entire idea from this. The blocks all have their own little purposes. Up and down blocks, speed or slow down the stage, respectively, I believe. R blocks, reverse rotation. These little gems block the way to the Chaos Emerald, which is right there. One of six down. That's right, six. The uh, seventh wasn't added until the next game. or Yeah, next game, because uh, technically two was, I believe, the third game released in Japan, at least, because of CD. Hmm. Goal blocks also uh, uh, in the special zone send you out to. So don't try to. So try not touch. Try not to touch those. <laughs> anyway, this jump right here is a bit annoying because uh, you get warped like that if you jump too high. So make your jump as specific as possible and roll on through. Rings, of course, like in the first second game, save you from getting killed. Although the invincibility frames cannot save you from spikes, similar to Mega Man One, which I think I showed off at one point. If you die, if you hit, hit spikes in when you have invincibility frames, you will die. It's a uh, if you if you land off the spikes, you, yeah, you'll be fine. But otherwise, uh, good luck. I actually think that happens in the stage too. <laughs> By the way, I'm just gonna say this right now. I love this game soundtrack. Ugh. Then again, actually, that's one weird thing about Sonic music is that it doesn't really sound like Genesis music. Because a majority of all other games on the Genesis have a specific twang to them, similar to how Zelda 2 sounds in the US version. But in this, it... But Sonic music just does not sound like the Genesis whatsoever. I have no idea how he did it. And that's the end of the stage. And unlike Sonic 2, where every act only had or every zone only had two acts. In this one, they all have three, but the third one is a boss, and you can't get a Chaos Emerald in it. I will say that a majority of these special stages are rather easy, actually. Uh, there's only really one or two that are difficult. Uh, the first one is the next one, actually. Which I was not looking forward to playing even recording it. Because uh, I recorded this all in one session. And, uh... Needless to say, I had to edit out a few attempts at a special stage or two. But, but then again, uh, there was like a 10 minute break in between, so maybe... I'm rambling on to myself right now. Yeah, ready. Alright, two Chaos Emeralds down. <laughs> Actually, I just realized, we start off with the blue Chaos Emerald. That's a bit odd, because if I remember correctly, the green one's almost always been the first one after this, right? Uh. Green Hill Zone Act 3, the first boss stage of the game, and, uh, I... Frankly, this, the boss of the stage is one of the most overused bosses in Sonic history. Oh, what the... Uh... Where... Ah... My eyes are kinda tired right now. <laughs> I 
Actually, if I remember correctly, this stage layout in specific uh, was used in the Sonic Adventure 2 Battle uh, Green Hill Zone extra stage you get for getting all the em em emblems, because I remember there being an extra life on top of that loop-to-loop -loop in that as well. But that might just be me going insane, I'm not sure. Hmm. Anyway, basic story of this game, I know I'm getting into this a bit late. Oh wait, here first, here's the spike glitch. I should have had invincibility frames there. The basic story is that Ro Dr. Rival Robotnik has kidnapped all the animals of, I believe it's South Island. It's one of the cognitive directions on a compass. I believe it's South Island. Uh, and he's using them to power his robots. Every bad Nick you destroy has an animal in it, although freeing it really does nothing, you just get points. And uh, Sonic decides to set, try and save the day, and if you find the Chaos Emeralds, uh, you get the happy ending. <laughs> although there's not much of a difference besides uh, some like cosmetic change. Basic power ups are the shield, which t helps you take another. Uh, that. Uh, nah. Anyway, now we're at the first boss, which has been used in so many games in Sonic the Hedgehog history. It's used in here in Sonic 1, it's used in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, or Sonic in the, Sonic, the Sonic and Knuckles portion anyway. Uh, Sonic 4, Sonic Advance, a couple other ones probably that I'm missing. <laughs> and also Sonic Genesis, but uh, that's a Game Boy Advance remake of the Switch. No one should ever play. Ugh. I might as well get into what Sonic Genesis did wrong, that's so very, very bad. <laughs> Front choppy frame rates, physics are wonked out, screen crunch, which actually allows you to kill the bosses really easily, and uh, music quality is ass. Then again, I haven't loved the Game Boy Advance for, uh, for older ports, I think it has something to do with the sound chip. Anyway, now we're in Mario's, uh, Mario Zone, uh, Marvel Zone, or as it should be, really, Marvel Zone. Now, if you love the speed of Green Hill, uh, I have some disappointing news. It's this zone is not fast whatsoever. It's actually really, really slow compared to the other ones. Not the slowest zone in the game. No, no, that's coming up. But uh, we'll get there probably next part. Ah, uh, uh, and uh, I won't mention that yet, actually. For some reason, this gr the, the environment graphics for the stage have always reminded me of another game that I can never really seem to name. I'm not sure what it is. Whoa, i surprised it did not get crushed there. And by the way, when I was recording this, I hadn't played the game in like... Th oh wait, no, uh, I'm thinking of something else, actually. What am I thinking of? I'm not sure. I'm tired. <laughs> It's 4 o'clock in the morning right now. <laughs> My rings. Ah, uh, wow, Marzori's immature humor. I really am tired. <laughs> well, I know what I'm doing right after this. Basic gimmick with the stage is there's lava in a lot of places that can... Oh, by the way, glitch jump right there. Certain areas you won't do the jumping animation. Actually... That made me jump when I was recording this, I'm not gonna lie, because I haven't played this game in, like, four years by this point. I play Sonic 2 a little more than this, and Sonic 3 a lot more than any of the others. Then there's the Sonic 4 games, which I need to get back to playing Episode 2, actually. Basic rule of thumb with these game with the stages, though, is if you find a shield, try and keep it. Or at least in the first two acts of any stage. If you find a shield, try to keep it with you and get 50 rings to get to the end, so you can easily get into the special stage. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, my least favorite special stage in the game. It's, the frame rate on my screen is really low right now for some reason. I'm not sure if that's gonna be in the final video, though. The thing is, but that's much such a pain about this special stage in specific is it's far too wide open for its own good. Because of that, you can really lose yourself and you can end up in the goal blocks a lot, because... I will say this, this is my eighth time trying to record the game, because I was trying to go without missing a single Chaos Emerald. If I missed one, I restarted. In fact, actually, what, that's what I was thinking of earlier when I was at that, when I was pushing that block, and my first run through, uh, I forgot that you could push that onto the Switch. 
Anyway, now we have three of the six cast emeralds. We're already halfway done. <laughs> if, I, if my plans are correct, we should have all six by the end of next video. By the way, I love that continue jingle so much. <laughs> For some reason, uh, I'm not sure what it is, but this track reminds me of something from a from a Final Fantasy. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe you guys can tell. Then again, at this point, uh, I'm not sure if we have any big Final Fantasy players subscribed yet, but hopefully we will. <laughs> then again, I suppose Chris. Mm -hmm. Surprise! Thankfully, lava is not instant death like it is in Mario. Well, at least the 2D Mario's. However, we'll still kill you if you're on it for too long. I'm surprised it didn't end up that death, actually. <laughs> oh well, I'm too I'm too tired to edit right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna edit that out. Anyway, one, actually, one thing I do kind of like about this game is that it kind of reminds me of Mega Man X. It, it teaches you what to do through early parts of the stage. Like, we'll be seeing that later on in the act, and in Act 3 as well, and it'll be, have a bit more of a twist to it. I, I, I like when games do that. Actually, one of the things I really don't like about the Marvel Zone in total... Mar wait, Marvel Zone? Uh, yeah, that, that's it. Something of Marvel Gardens on three <laughs> is that uh, it's too enclosed. Uh, I might just be because I'm somewhat claustrophobic in some video games. By the way, this lava is really slow. That was like what three seconds <laughs> before it got to there. That is pathetic. And I know people can probably get there faster than the other ways. So you could probably get there potentially like eight seconds beforehand. So that's kind of well. As we're playing a Sonic game, might as well make the appropriate reference to it. You're too slow! I really should not record what I'm tired because I'm probably coming off as a really weird guy right now. <clears throat> Red Springs and the Yellow Springs actually are a bit different. Red Springs, if I remember correctly, shoot you farther when you're pressing a jump when you're pressing a direction, and I don't remember that well. I know one of them presses shoots you farther when you're doing something. Uh, I'm too I'm too lazy to look it up. And this is the twist I was talking about. They added that uh, little lava bloom thing. As for why, it doesn't really do anything at this point, though. Uh, it does with this next one, but uh, eh, I guess more introductory stuff. By the way, Veer, go down here for a secret passage that leads to, I believe, a life and 10, 20 rings. I love that one-up jingle for some reason. But then again, one-up jingles are usually really catchy, aren't they? Except for Mega Man's. I can never remember the one from Mega Man. I'm not sure why. Considering that I'm a much bigger Mega Man fan. Oh, no, hello, Glitch Jump. How are you? Uh, it's weird that I can't remember it. You know, it's one thing that I wonder actually about the Sonic series, why did they change the shield color? Um, I actually think about it, because uh, the first game to change it was Sonic Adventure, I believe? And it's because it would be kind of hard to see in the blue one, uh, that would actually make some amount of sense. I don't know. It's not really that big of a matter, it still protects me, so that's all I really care about. It's not like I'm a fan who complains about green eyes for no reason, even though that really doesn't change anything. Actually, if I remember correctly, in the Fleet Lake we, my comics, weren't, or, it, it was either Fleet Lake or Archie, weren't the Green Eyes, like, something having to do with the Chaos Emeralds? I never had the Fleet Lake comics, I only have Archie. Eh. Anyway, if I remember correctly, we are coming up on the end, no, we are not, I, whenever I see that little, like, fortress thing right there that was in the background a few seconds ago, with the Caterpillar was, I always think I'm at the end of the stage. It, I think it's because it is at the end of most of the stages. Anyway, time for the only real combo you can do in the game. Constantly breaking these blocks can actually get you quite the number of points. Although, uh, I don't know, wait. And that's actually the only time I think you can get a 10,000 marker in the game. 
I know a couple places you can get it in Sonic 3, though. I'm wondering if I'll show those off, because at this point, uh, I only have two episodes of that recorded. Then again, they haven't... That was, then again, those were recorded, like, two months ago. <laughs> I really need to get back to recording more stuff. <laughs> School's been distracting. I'm probably off tune so badly, it's not even funny. I just love this game's music so much. Sonic 3 soundtrack is still the best one, uh, especially Ice Cap Zone. Oh, Ice Cap. But uh, I cannot deny a good soundtrack. Also, I forget if it's only the 10,000 markers right there, but those point markers you get when you jump, uh, some of them are only a tenth of what they really are. Which is a bit odd. Uh, probably programming error limitations with the Genesis. You know, but it's f it's weird that it took until Sonic 4 for them to actually bring back this concept. Thinking about it, but then again, Sonic 4 you're controlling the stage, not uh, Sonic himself. And even then, those ones are still annoying to play, mostly because I'm too distracted by that dang background. Because the backgrounds in this are just these weird fish, bird, polygon polygonal things. Whereas in Sonic 4, they're downright acid trips, pretty much. Actually, one, one weird thing about the uh, Sonic Genesis part on the Game Boy Advance I brought up earlier is that you go through these gems really fast. It, it's ridiculous the speed you reach, actually. I'm thinking that entire port is ridiculous. It shouldn't have existed, or at least it should have been better. But then again, from what I've heard, the only reason it's ridiculous is because it uses the Sonic Advance engine for it. I'm not sure why they can just bring over the Genesis engine, but apparently that advanced engine really messes with the Genesis programming. I don't see why, but I'm not a programming nerd, so I wouldn't know much about that. Marble Zone Act 3. Probably one of the more boring acts to watch, actually. But then again, what? I was pushing nothing. That was weird. But then again, a uh, majority of Marble Zone is just kind of boring. Then, uh, but then again, I can say that about most of Sonic 1. Green Hill Zone is awesome, Starlight Zone and Spring Yard are awesome zones, but uh, all the other zones are pretty... bland. I mean, I can excuse it because uh, this was the first game in the series. Sonic 2 was a lot more speed emphasized. But then again, you didn't see much of that because I was debugging the whole time. I seriously gotta redo that because my friend was kind of angry about that. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I've ever gotten to that path on the left there with those uh, blocks. I don't think I've ever found that. Then again, I might just not be exploring them much enough, because I usually stick to one path in Sonic 1. Well, except for Spring Yard Zone. Actually, uh, this hallway right here really shows off the wacky physics of Sonic Genesis, because... Uh, for some reason, sometimes when you go, when you are moving and you get blocked by something, even if you're not jumping immediately, some for some reason Sonic will sometimes decide to keep his momentum and just skyrocket to the right or left after holding that. Anyway, secret passage right here for an extra life. Which is a life I'm probably not going to have for long. Get hit by the bat. Goddamn bats. Get hit by that, have a weird dying for the animation, and what killed me there? The spike's not even out. Yeah, that might just be my aim though, because this is a bit of an unstable build. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I feel like I've heard that chain sound effect from another game somewhere. I don't know what it is. Eh. I'm thinking too much right now. And for some reason, right here, I have a lot of trouble with this jump right now. I don't know why, but then again, I recorded this last night at 7 a.m. <laughs> and mind you, that, that, that probably doesn't sound that bad, but keep in mind, uh, I was up until. I was. I fell asleep at 8 a.m. <laughs> After editing this, because, uh, needless to say. I was up late last night. Then again, I... I don't, I don't know what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> I need sleep. 
Anyway, uh, second boss here against Robotnik. He is rather easy. Then again, I can say that a lot of the bosses in this game are really easy. He'll go from platform to platform, shooting fire that covers the entire thing. Just jump to the other one and make sure you don't get hit. And, and don't be an idiot like I am right now. And you should be perfectly fine. But with Robotnik defeated here in Marble Go in Marble Garden, Marble Zone, I'm gonna have to end this up here, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And next time on Let's Play Sonic the Hedgehog, we will head into the Spring Yard Zone and finish the Chaos Emeralds, and probably see a bit more after that. See you guys then.